Welcome to Module 1 of the Honeywell VFD online training. This module will cover Honeywell variable frequency drives and some basic VFD applications. After completing all modules, you'll know how to wire, install, keypad program, and commission a Honeywell VFD. If you agree with the value demonstrated in these modules, we'd like to work together to provide a VFD solution for your next project. If you have any questions or need assistance, please contact your local Honeywell sales representative or field device specialist. This module will cover what is a VFD? How much money can you save with one? Where VFDs are used? What controls a VFD? And what HVAC applications use VFDs? A variable frequency drive adjusts the speed of an HVAC fan or pump motor based on demand to save energy and prolong motor life. Heating and cooling systems are sized to condition buildings for when the load is at its greatest, midsummer for cooling or midwinter for heating. So what happens during those in-between months? The motor usually doesn't have to run at full speed. A VFD will modulate the fan or pump motor to match the current conditions. Without the VFD, the motor would run at full speed. Modulating the fan or pump based on current space demands saves energy and also provides better temperature control for the building. Also, a VFD provides a soft start for the motor, thus increasing motor life. We can calculate the energy saved when a VFD reduces the speed of a motor based on the affinity laws, also known as fan laws or pump laws. These laws apply both to centrifugal and axial fans and pumps. When a motor is running at full speed or 60 Hertz, there is no energy savings since it's running at full speed. But if we reduce the speed by just 10% to 54 Hertz, it will reduce the energy used by 27%. If we reduce the speed of the motor by 20% to 48 Hz, it will reduce the energy used by 49%, almost half the energy used by reducing the motor just 20%. That's a significant energy savings for the end user. Reducing the motor speed more and more will result in less significant energy savings as the curve begins to flatten out. We don't recommend running the motor at less than 30 Hz. At 30 Hz, there's an 88% energy savings because the fan needs to run fast enough to cool itself. Honeywell makes VFDs for HVAC applications, fans and pumps. These are applications with a fluctuating load where we can ramp up or ramp down the speed of the motor to meet the load. These are called variable torque applications and with them you will see energy savings with reduced motor speed. There are other applications that need to run at the same speed even as the load varies. These include elevators, escalators, hoists, and conveyors. As these need to run at a certain speed, the affinity laws do not apply to them. Honeywell does not make VFDs for constant torque applications. VFDs are controlled by sensors, temperature, pressure, or CO2 sensors. The sensor is either wired through a controller or straight to the VFD. In this example, a duct sensor is wired to a DDC controller. The controller is commanding the VFD's speed. Most VFDs operate as part of a DDC system. In these cases, the DDC system provides the smarts. The VFD acts in response to the DDC system commands. In this example, the duct sensor is wired straight to the VFD. From the VFD's keypad, a PID loop wizard is used to set up how the VFD controls the fan speed. The PID loop control will maintain a fan or pump set point based on feedback from the sensor. The PID loop control looks at the current feedback while considering past and predicting future feedback to control the motor at the optimum speed. PID loop basics and setup are covered later in another of the VFD training modules. These are all the fan applications where VFDs are commonly used to provide energy savings. VFDs are used for a variety of applications. We will go through the most common fan applications that use VFDs. The image on top depicts a typical constant volume error-based HVAC system. Although an error-based system is shown, the same concepts apply to water-based systems. 
In a constant volume system, the supply fan or system pump will typically run at a constant speed of 60 Hertz. This system typically employs either a bypass damper or a three-way bypass valve to regulate the pressure produced by the main supply fan or system pump. The lower image is of a variable volume system. Here the VFD controls the supply fan or system pump in conjunction with the dampers or valves. As the dampers and valves close, the system's pressure builds and the VFD slows down the fan or pump to maintain the system's design pressure. As the control dampers and valves open, the system's pressure declines and the VFDs speed up the fan or pump to maintain the system's design pressure. This allows all terminal devices, such as diffusers, unit ventilators, etc., to receive the correct flow of air or water. Multi-tenant condo buildings are very popular in larger cities. These condos typically have parking garages that are at least two or three levels. VFDs are used to modulate exhaust fans when carbon monoxide levels increase. A VFD can be very beneficial in a system with an air filter like this one for a paint booth. The fan in this example is constant volume. The VFD modulates the fan based on a sensor measuring the static pressure downstream from the filter. As the filter loads up, the fan will ramp up to maintain constant airflow. One of the most common uses of a VFD is in air handling units and variable air volume boxes or VAV boxes. In this example, there is an air handling unit with a supply and return fan. Both fans are modulated by a VFD. The air handling unit and the VAV boxes each have a DDC controller. The AHU controller commands the VFDs to the desired fan speed. For the supply fan, the VFD maintains a duct static pressure set point established by the test and balance contractor. This contractor runs the air handling unit at 60 Hertz, full speed, with the VAV boxes 100% open. Then they ensure that design airflow is delivered to each room by adjusting balancing dampers. Once the system is balanced, they take a duct pressure reading and record this as the duct pressure set point. Once the building is in use, the VFD will modulate the fan to maintain this duct pressure set point. As VAV box dampers modulate open and close to meet demand, the static pressure in the system will fluctuate. An air pressure sensor will sense this, and the VFD will respond by ramping the fan speed up or down to maintain the static pressure at that set point. For the return fan, the VFDs modulate the fan based on building static pressure. Design requirements specify how much outside air is needed based on the number of people in the building and how it's used. The outside air damper modulates to deliver this outside air, and as it does, it affects the building pressure. The building static pressure is kept constant by modulating the return fan with a VFD. Cooling towers cool down the condenser loop of water-cooled chillers and water source heat pumps. Cooling tower fans are often controlled by VFDs to modulate based on the tower's leaving water temperature. As you can see in this example, as the water temperature increases, the fan will ramp up to ensure the set point is not exceeded. Check chiller manufacturer specifications for this temperature set point. This application could be controlled by a DDC system or with the water temperature sensor wired straight to the VFD. If wired this way, use the PID loop wizard in the Smart VFD to configure proper control. This drive also has a sleep mode that shuts down the fan if the fan has been at the minimum frequency for a program length of time. This achieves even greater energy savings. These are all the pump applications where VFDs are commonly used to save energy. VFDs are used in many applications. I'll go through the most common pump applications that use VFDs. The most common pumping system is the primary secondary pumping system. Here is one for hot water. The primary loop control continually circulates hot water from the supply to the return of the boiler. 
The pump in the secondary loop will speed up or slow down depending on the temperature of the water in that loop. When the secondary loop water temperature starts to drop, the pump ramps up, pulling warmer water from the primary loop. When the secondary water temperature is at or above set point, the pump slows down. The loop cools off as less water from the primary loop is introduced into the secondary loop. Pumps in a variable primary pumping system use a VFD to modulate based on space cooling or heating demands. In this system, there are no primary pumps to maintain minimum flow to the chiller or boiler. The control contractor will install a water flow meter that monitors flow to the chiller or boiler. On days with low heating or cooling load in the space, the flow meter is used to prevent the pump VFD from further decreasing speed. This concludes VFD basics and applications. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Honeywell sales representative or field device specialist.